Hey, this is Jerry with Backwoods Animation, and today I'm going to tell you some top secret animation advice. There's a few things that make a really great animation, and I'm going to get into that real quick. Um, but first, there's a common trend going on where your design style is very basic. So this character here is very simple. Geometric shapes with some rounded corners. Um, it, and that's fine. If that's what the, uh, if that's what the style of the kids are going towards nowadays, that's great. The problem is because it's such a basic design, the animations tend to be even more basic. Um, and that's just egregious. It's a travesty to see such, um, basic design influencing your, your character animation. Um, so I'm going to show you some tips to break up that very robotic design, very simplistic design, and make it feel more organic. The the few things that make a really great animation, uh, and this is something that not many people tell you about, it's your shoulder movement. A lot of weight is held in the shoulders. Um, anything from, you know, an angry expression to a happy expression to a sad expression to an empowered expression is all kind of placed upon the shoulders. So I'm going to show you how I set up a rig to do that. And I'm going to encourage you to do the same. Make sure if you have a character, make sure his shoulders are moving or her shoulders, because if they're not, you're not doing your character justice. So I'm going to play this animation just to show you a real basic um, example of all these things that I just mentioned playing out in one animation. So we have a character basically looking at a picture um, and their their memory is sparked and so as they see it they go oh I think I, I remember this and then by the end of it they're going uh-huh uh-huh oh I remember that moment so diving into this what are we looking at so we're seeing some good bounce in here which is our good overlapping animation overlapping animation is basically it's secondary animation that happens when a key object moves, everything else moves around it. So if we have a body that bounces up, some things that will be following that animation will be arms and hands and shoulders and head, head uh, wobble. Um, and that's your secondary animation. The next we have a good pose. So he basically, it's not a strong pose, it's just a, a, a better pose, I guess. So he pops up and he's holding the frame to look at it. So that's a pose. And what, what I'm playing with here is the timing. I want the timing to feel snappy and I want it to feel real. You know, I want it to feel like he's actually picking something up. It's not floating up to him. It, it's not like it weighs nothing, but it actually has a little bit of weight. And that's where that jostle comes into play with the picture frame bouncing. Uh, next we have facial animation. Um, so he starts off in this kind of empathetic look of like, what is this picture? And then it, it quickly forms into, Hey, I'm, I'm forming a memory here. There's something I remember about this picture. And by the end of it, he's ecstatic. Like I remembered this moment in my life or somebody else's life that was very monumental for him. Um, so we have a great change. Um, maybe not the best change in dramatic. Uh, feelings because you always want to accompany a sad emotion with with maybe an empowered emotion or a happy emotion you want to have that that juxtaposition that contrast to really make a good um, selling point and then what do we have next we have you know maybe I'll talk about the shoulder movement so this is a great example of shoulder movements it breaks up this basic geometric shape of a character and makes it feel more organic his his shoulders are coming up to his his bottom of his ears almost you know it's like if i didn't have that movement would it be as believable as it is i don't know um but you can certainly say it's not hurting the piece by any means to have his shoulders moving so much um, and so I would emphasize to anybody animating, make sure you have these good shoulder movements because there's a lot of expression held within the shoulders. Now let's jump into what's actually happening within this rig. 
Now, guys, you're going to be astounded because there's literally almost only two frames that happen or, or two poses. And man, it was it so simple to animate this. Yes, it's a very simple animation. I'm not going to say that I have animated some crazy, you know, crazy action sequence by any means. Um, but just in terms of movement and animation that's happening for at least five seconds, <clears throat> it's very simple. <clears throat> so we have, here, I'll just start with one. These are the hips. So we have two poses. We have the, the down pose and then we have the up pose. And then these next two frames that follow it are just the jiggle. Basically, he comes up into position, he drops back down a little bit, and then he comes back up a little bit. The way that I animated this whole body section is I took, there's, there's a bit, there's essentially three controllers, the hips, the body, and the shoulders. And I took all three of these and I animated them at once. So I'll put them back at zero to where it was when I animated it. So here at zero, everything's down. All three of these guys down. Then I came to frame what, frame seven and I shot them up. And then I came over here a few frames, bounced down a little bit and then up a little bit. And that gives a nice little up and down movement, but to get that real nice organic squash and stretch and bounce that's when i did the timing of these and the hit so so i sorry i pulled them out one frame from each other so the body goes out one frame from the hips and then the shoulders go out one frame from the waist and when you think about it try to think about what's powering the movement What's coming first? What's the first action? Why did I pick the hips first versus the shoulders first? A lot of movement comes from the hips because the legs are like one of the most powerful points in the body. So it's kind of like the base of our emotion. When we move in any kind of um, like joyful expression, it basically comes from the hips. Like we're leaping out of our seat to experience this thing. So the hips come first and then everything else follows. So then it goes the waist and then it goes the shoulders. Um, and then let's look at some of these uh, curves, these timing curves. So I have a kind of a quick jump right in here. So it, it eases in about one frame and then boom, it jumps up right here at this peak. So I have this guy kind of pulled out there. And then once it settles into our pose, our, our first keyframe, then I just have a simple ease in and ease out. You can hit F9 on the keyboard to get that. Whoops. Um, or you can come to this little easy ease right here. Boom. And that that's something I like to do for all of my secondary movements is have a real basic up and down or like wave back and forth. So that's, that's the, the bulk of that movement. And then everything else is a secondary or overlapping animation. So the hands have, it looks like essentially the same exact movement as the body did. We have an up, which is a little more uh, extreme where it comes up into his face and then drops down and then back up. So everything is on its own different timing, but just offset a little bit. So it starts with the hips and then it trickles down all the way down, down, down to the hands. So the hands are the last to move into place, which means they're the last to bounce. Moving into our shoulder movements, um, this really gives the sense that I'm pulling this object up as high as I can so I can get the best view of it. So his, his shoulders come from this down, this down pose and they jump up, right? Because that's what shoulders do. If, if you don't have that, man, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you, you're really missing out. Um, and let me show you how it works. Essentially, that's not right. 
essentially on this body. Let's find the body. Here on the body, let's look at the mesh. Um, what am I? What am I looking at here? Show, show me my mesh. So, I don't want to see the mesh. We have a sh what I call the shoulder point here, the body point, and then the hip point. So these three points control the body. And then uh, on top of that, I have two points here, which are the left and right shoulders. And these guys are parented to this shoulder null. Okay, so if I come up here and I find, if I find my shoulders, these two shoulders will move my mesh, okay? Each shoulder, you know, moves the mesh individually, but the arm is, and what's interesting is the arm is parented to the shoulder. So if I move the shoulder, the arm moves with it, the upper arm moves with it. But if I want, what I can do is I can move the arm individually from the mesh, right? Because it's parented to the shoulder null. Why I would want to do this, um, maybe I'm doing like a side profile where he's walking sideways or he's acting sideways. Um, those are definitely some benefits for that. But usually I just keep it right in line with this null object. So that's the way that I set up my shoulders. Um, obviously if I didn't have, if I didn't have that attached to the mesh, I would leave the shoulders where they are, or maybe even just move them a little bit here to give this kind of up and down. And that's certainly fine too. You can do that. And I'm sure it would be just as believable. I think it looks better. And this is why I did it this way attached to the mesh of the body because you're pulling that flesh with it. So I can pull the shoulder out and it stays connected to my arm. All right, so that is it. That's basically how I set up uh, an animation of a character. You wanna make sure you have your pose to pose very simple. Po pose A to pose B, keep it easy. Uh, and then just adjust the timing of all the body parts, all the extremities to get that really nice secondary animation. If you adhere to these principles, I guarantee you, you will be a better animator for it. All right, guys, as always, thanks for watching. Uh, if you'd like me to go into depth with anything that I've done, maybe even more animation, I can start from scratch and then jump into an actual movement of a character. Let me know, and I'd love to do that stuff. Um, but thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.